And our final post from Justin McCree on what this outcome means for South Korea. Some sections of the South Korean media reacted with alarm. Yonhap news agency said the failed summit had set the security clock on the Korean peninsula back to zero, adding that efforts to defuse the nuclear standoff with Pyongyang was now at a crossroads. Financial news, meanwhile, wondered if the two sides would struggle to maintain the momentum for dialogue. The outcome could prove a setback for South Korea's president, Moon Jae-in, whose plans for greater inter-Korean engagement depend on a breakthrough on Pyongyang's nuclear program. Media reports said Moon, who has been instrumental in bringing Kim into the global diplomatic fold, was planning to unveil new plans for greater engagement with the North at a ceremony on Friday to mark the centenary of a Korean uprising during Japan's 1910-45 colonial rule of the peninsula. His enthusiasm for stronger economic ties with the North has been tempered by measures to rein in Pyongyang's nuclear ambitions, as any significant investment in the North by Seoul could fall foul of international sanctions. Moon's proposals are expected to underline South Korea's desire for the two Koreas to take the lead in deciding the long-term future of a potentially denuclearized peninsula, South Korean media said. We are no longer in the periphery of history. I hope we will open a new era with pride and confidence that the strength to decide and open the next 100 years rests in us," he told a cabinet meeting this week, according to Yonhap. It speculated that Moon, who has met Kim Lee times in less than a year, would make the case for greater economic cooperation and easier cross-border access for goods and people. That's all from us today.